Good day. So today's video we're going to be doing some electrical work on this uh, 2004 Chevy Express. This is a road track conversion vehicle and uh, this video is going to be more centric around conversion vehicles for a couple of reasons. Uh, one being it has a second battery in the back and uh, some of the wiring is missing. This vehicle was outfitted with a uh, tow package on it but uh, for whatever reason uh, it looks like road check cut off some of the wiring and on the interior not everything is accessible so uh, I guess we'll take a, a quick look around the van and then look at uh, some of the material you're going to need so on the uh, Chevy vehicles you will find that there's a, a clump of wires under the carpet that have the uh, brakes preset here but they do not emerge where they're supposed to so these uh, are labeled that's going to be your uh, stop lamp switch that's supposed to go out to the trailer and uh, one is ground and one is power and then the colors switch back and forth yeah so black is ground on here and uh, red white is the battery and we got to keep an eye on that because we're going to switch from red to black in various locations I believe under the hood this can be a bit of a struggle we'll see if I can get this battery or the fuse cover off in one go so basically you need to lift it up and then push it down and pull it out the clips are all broken on this we've had it out a couple times so you got to move the uh, brake booster hose out of the way a bit Get this back push it down and if you're lucky pull it out first time we did this with my dad probably took us a half an hour it was a, a bit of a learning experience so typically in this van there would be a black jacketed wire with a red insulation on it kind of like that one that would be kind of just loose hanging around here somewhere that you would put on that uh, terminal there just above the uh, red wire sorry we're just having trouble focusing in the right spot so that terminal is uh, also goes to that middle fuse position of those five fuses there and you put a 30 amp uh, fuse in there so that red wire should go inside the uh, vehicle to uh, where we were just looking but uh, I cannot find it so I think I'll have to we'll do a little bit of testing but luckily likely I'll have to run a new wire inside of the vehicle if you look at the uh, fuse panel details here there's a couple for the trailer Let's have a look here, or my fresh myself. So 13 is a trailer. I don't know where that one goes. And then uh, 50 is also uh, a trailer. So the 50 is uh, the big one there. If it's a, a J case fuse or something. So we'll need to do that. Another thing that's going on is that there's a battery trickle charger inside the vehicle and they just ran some like house wiring to bring that up to the uh, front of the vehicle. So when you plug in the van, the trickle charger charges the front battery. So if you have your doors open or something, you're not going to kill the battery when you're camping. The uh, generator also has a battery charger in it. So there's multiple different things. Like we were in Toronto last weekend and our alternator wasn't working for some reason so we were able to run the generator while we were driving and keep the uh, battery going but uh, once the alternator cooled down things started to work again so we were okay so normally on these vehicles with the uh, pre-done wiring you would see a cable go through here kind of like a loom like this that would have the uh, brake the blue brake wire in it but I can't find it it disappears somewhere before the, the fuel tank on the vehicle. So uh, I'll take another little poke at it. 
if I had an electrical tester that could uh, locate disconnected wires, like uh, off potential wires, that might be handy, but uh, I don't have one. So uh, I've taken a look inside of all these looms and they're not what uh, I'm looking for. I don't know if we can look at it or not, but Road Trek adds a part to the frame right there. So we're going to run our wires down uh, the inside of that frame extension there. Otherwise you could just strap it to the uh, frame somewhere. So this vehicle's lifted about five inches. So I could probably squeeze under here, or maybe uh, I might use ramps just to make it a bit easier. If your vehicle's not lifted, you will definitely need to have ramps to do this. You'll probably have to lift up the front, hello, and then uh, lift up the back afterwards to do that. So Road Check did have some wiring on these initially. What I discovered was uh, the van being so low and the wiring was attached here. When you park the vehicle, you'd knock the uh, harness off. So these are the wires. That's really hard to see. I don't know if I can help with that or not. But anyway, you'll have uh, some wires coming down that go to uh, various things, like the, sorry, the uh, turn signals, brake lamps, and such. So I just cut them off and put uh, caps on them. I'll try to show that better. And there's some other loose wire that's hanging down. I kind of think that that's my uh, reverse light. I'm gonna have to take a look at that and figure out what it is. Then there is another wire. Again, this I think this comes off of the uh, coach battery. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit as that's uh, a good thing. Because if you have an enclosed trailer like this, it has interior lighting, you can forget the interior lighting on. And there's no protection on this vehicle for uh, turning anything off. So if you left the lighting on inside your trailer, you could kill the battery pretty quickly. So your auxiliary power, it's best to come off the uh, coach battery. So that's what we're going to do. On my uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, it had a whole separate set of fuses for the uh, trailer so if you had a trailer fault and one of the wires shorted out you'd only lose that on the trailer and not on the tow vehicle so that was uh, kind of handy but this vehicle I don't know Chevy's a little bit behind on that but they pre-wired the uh, stop lamp switch so they're kind of ahead on that so I don't know there's a couple different ways manufacturers do it there's no standard Take a look at the uh, supplies that we've got here. So these are hard to find. Reese used to make these. You can put the uh, connector in here and clip that onto your the bottom of your receiver. That kind of looks all right. I bought this device here because it's got the uh, all the connections on the four-way all pre-wired and if you look at it carefully the wires are all doubled up so there's no like uh, morettes or anything inside this harness so it should be pretty waterproof so uh, I'm gonna have to connect the ground the trailer brakes auxiliary power and uh, the bag the yellow is the backup lights my trailer doesn't have backup lights I don't know if I'll install them later, but uh, it's an option. So to isolate the uh, trailer from the van, I bought this here. There's two flavors of this. This is a tail light converter that uh, is externally powered. So this isn't really a very good product. Uh, Hopkins makes some better ones, so I wouldn't recommend buying this. This is only good for a couple amps. It's not, if you had a big trailer with uh, regular style lights on it, filament bulbs. This probably wouldn't do the job, but my trailer doesn't have a whole lot of lights on it. And uh, they're all LED, so I'm gonna be okay. So it's an 855-1200 part there. You're gonna need to get some uh, metric screws, I think, for the fuse panel. This is incorrectly shows SAE. And then when you look at the uh, details, they're all M for metric. 
You need a, uh, a multimeter, crimper, stripper, a knife, heat source. So uh, I'll kind of piece all this together here before we go too far. Obviously you need a brake controller. I don't spend a lot of money on them. They're, they're just good enough for once or twice a year. I like the ones that have a lever so you can really lock up the brakes if you need to. You can turn up the gain. This one has some instructions on how to set it up if the trailer weighs more than you or you weigh more than the trailer, depending how that goes. I decided not to tow this trailer with the Jeep when it's full because it's, it's really full. I'll just say that. They need a bunch of wire. There's some conflicting instructions with this brake controller. One of them says to use like number 14, the other one says to use 10. So I'm just going to use number 10. The van's fairly long and then the trailer is fairly long. So like all together I'm going to be 40 feet long. So I might as well uh, spend a bit of money on wire. Need some zip ties. I've got some loom to tuck all the wiring into. And uh, I think that's about it for the uh, introduction. So I just piece this all together and then obviously it's handy to have this to test the uh, the wiring when you're as you're going. So uh, I'll get this uh, kind of piece together and we'll take another look. All right. So basically, what we're going to do here is uh, put a bit of grease, electrical connector grease, in this connection here between the uh, trailer connector and the uh, isolator. So this isolator can be used for uh, a three light system where the uh, what do you say? The turn indicators are separate from the uh, brake lights or where they're combined. And when they're combined, you take this uh, red wire and you ground this to the uh, body of the vehicle. So this uh, will have a fuse on it. So if you have a fault on the trailer, it'll blow the fuse on here rather than blowing the fuse on your uh, tow vehicle, which would be kind of annoying because then you, if you're on the highway, you can't have any emergency lights which wouldn't be good. So we're gonna put some rubber tape over this and see us stretch the rubber tape really tight and it kind of amalgamates into one rubber piece and we'll put some regular black tape over top of that so I'm not gonna show that and we're gonna start at the back of the vehicle kind of get everything mounted where we want it and getting it looking good that way when we run the long wires from the front we know what we uh, where we're going to end so we can make it look nice and tidy and not have big piles of extra wire or waste anywhere. So uh, I'll just get that kind of organized. Alright, so things are kind of coming along. We've got the uh, hitch or the electrical kind of mounted on the hitch. I had forgotten that these are not big enough for the uh, what size, the 10,000, 12,000 pound uh, receivers here. They don't fit over the square. Sometimes you can use a gear clamp to hold these on. I just used some zip ties. It's about the same height as my generator. So if I hit this when I'm parking, then uh, saves the generator from taking a hit. So that's, uh, that's okay. It doesn't really accommodate the extra four wire very well. So I just have it sticking out the back. I've got the uh, connector uh, greased, rubber taped, and then electrical taped. Try to take up some of the slack here as best I can. Now I've got three wires I need to ground here. I've got the white here. There's another white up here. It has to get grounded and then I need to ground this wire as well so that the isolator works correctly. So I'm going to drill a hole into the uh, receiver. I'm going to turn around it's not as you can see. seems like the best kind of location. So I'm just going to drill a hole here somewhere, the 732nd bit, and use just scrape it down a little bit. And uh, so I can bolt those wires on. Excuse me, I've kind of lost where I'm at with things. Yeah, so bolt these wires onto there. I still need to figure out if this is a ground or a uh, reverse light. I don't remember. And then I'll have to open up the uh, battery compartment on the side 
to check that wire that's hanging down over here. There it is. And so we'll be doing that in a few minutes. So anyway, like I said, I'm just kind of trying to tidy things up here in the back so there's nothing hanging when I'm driving. And then we'll, we'll work our way towards the front after that. All right, so I got my uh, three wires ready. I've got the uh, heat shrink on them. And this one over here, I'm gonna put these on. So I used some uh, emery cloth, like plumber's uh, sandpaper to go and sand through this. I still have to check for ground. Should have done that before I started doing this. And uh, I'll be putting on a bit of this uh, grease on both sides so that the uh, it doesn't rust right away where this connection is made. Eventually it'll wash away, but I want it to last as long as I can before I have to take that off and sand it down again. All right, so just gonna test the ground now. So I'm going through the bolt that I put up in here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm just gonna test against the body for continuity. So I got an ammeter here set to ohms. I test across, so I'm getting uh, one and a half ohms, 1.1 right now. When I check the meter against itself, it's 0 0.4 ohms on its own. Oh, it goes down to zero eventually. So uh, that's a pretty good ground. One ohm will be adequate in my opinion. So uh, now what I need to do is connect the uh, signal wires that are off the vehicle from the conversion over to here. So they always have the right wire, extra long, so you can go to the other side of the vehicle. If you didn't have these here and your vehicle was finished on the inside, you would have to take these uh, signals out and uh, clip onto the wiring behind here, grab the uh, reverse here, and also uh, do the same on this side for the right turn signal. The reason being is that the wiring for the signals runs through the inside of the van in the uh, driver's side gutter. So uh, once it's done, you don't have any access to the inside of the vehicle. I've already did the reverse light so I could do the uh, backup camera here. So that is what that extra wire was that was hanging down. I must have uh, planned on doing this a couple years ago and never finished it. So uh, I'll be just tying in these wires here. That's a bit light for a reverse, and it's not gonna be protected for the uh, trailer either. So that's something to consider when you're doing this, because this uh, isolator that I've installed does not do that. I've got everything kind of tucked up here. I gotta protect the wiring where it goes over the uh, hitch. And then the isolator. Mounting it where I did right there kind of gets in the way of uh, removing the propane tank. There's two bolts on either side and then there's obviously the propane connections. And that's another good thing to mention. So when you're doing any uh, heat sources down here, you want to make sure your propane is off and it's not leaking. So you don't want to start a fire or an explosion in with the propane. So keep that in mind. So now I'm just going to but splice these onto here and heat shrink them again. So I just use this tool. It does a good job of uh, snipping the ends of the wires off without having any excess. And then I've got a uh, purpose bolt here where you just bring it all the way down and it reopens for whatever color you're going to be using. The small stuff is going to be the red wire, the red connectors. And the big stuff is probably going to be uh, yellow. So I'll get those connected, then we'll start looking at the uh, power supply from the auxiliary battery. I'm right, just going to give a quick demo on how I uh, strip my wires. So basically, the stripper, you can set the depth if you want it to be repeatable. But I kind of just guess, put it in maybe that far. I pulled off too much insulation that time, but that's that's okay for now. You probably want about half that removed. And then for the crimper, like I mentioned, it's color-coded, so you'll just kind of 
clip it onto the uh, butt splice or whatever ring terminal you're going to use. Put this in here. I'm not going to put it in all the way. You don't want any copper showing. So I'll just trim it off. There's a spot you can trim. That's a little more reasonable. So you put that in here. I'm just looking for the viewfinder here. You squeeze it all the way and it releases. And you get a perfect splice every time. Like I really wouldn't recommend using a uh, soldering iron or anything like that for a, a vehicle. And then you slip some uh, heat shrink tubing over it. You want to be a quarter inch or more longer on either side and uh, heat shrink that so no water gets in and ruins the wire. Alright so as I was trimming off my uh, reverse wire I noticed that it was uh, pretty black so that's uh, one of the problems when you get moisture in there. So I had to trim it back about a foot before I got some uh, good copper in there. You'll have to do that when that happens. You can try to sand the conductors if you're really getting desperate, but it would be preferred, you can just cut it back as far as you need to in order to get back to a, a good bare copper conductor without any corrosion. And then I'm going to be changing sizes of wire. So you can use, uh, this is a blue by red connector to do that. So you can jump up a size. And then uh, another option you can do is if you don't have uh, one of these uh, range taking connectors, you can stuff some extra copper in here and the side is too big so you'll, what you'll do is you'll trim off the insulation twice as long as you need and then fold it backwards and that doubles the size of your wire and you'll stick it in and then crimp it in order to make that work. So I've run two power circuits from the uh, auxiliary battery now. Decide not to use the power wire that was hanging down in the back because I didn't know if it was uh, under control of the battery isolator inside of the uh, van or not. I don't want the ability to turn off these uh, circuits. So one circuit is a 10 amp circuit which is for the uh, light isolator and then the other circuit is a 30 amp circuit which goes to the uh, power connector on the uh, trailer connector. So you can run like a winch or a um, a power jack or something like that from there and also run the lights inside of the vehicle. So we've got that hooked up. I got to put the battery back in my tray. The rails finally failed on that but that's not a big deal. So we leave the uh, positive on the right hand side because I don't know if you can see up there or not but there's more height when you get the battery slid in all the way. That way it's not shorting out on top of the uh, battery box here. I guess if you wanted to put in a uh, golf cart size battery, you could possibly uh, cut the bottom of this out. You'd have to deal with the exhaust. You have to lower that down a bit. These golf cart batteries are quite a bit higher. There's not much space before you run into the uh, spring shackles though, so I don't know. You probably have to put one on either side, you put another one over there. So anyway, we got all that wired up. You can't really tell, but there's like a two inch conduit in there that all of the, uh, everything slides inside of. So when you slide the battery in and out, there's a place for it to go. So I just, I made this a little bit longer so you might be able to reach the fuses without pulling the battery out. Everything here is hooked up except for the blue wire now so we're kind of ready to hook up the batteries and uh, start the vehicle up and do some testing so i'm just going to test with my device here so we'll do that in a second okay so at this point the battery is back in and uh, you can test all of your different light functions like the brakes and turn signals and whatnot that's indicating i have power to the uh, 12 volt power supply so I've got all of that hooked up. The only thing left now is uh, the blue wire like I mentioned before. So we'll have to start looking at the front <clears throat> again and, and see what we need to do there. So one thing I didn't mention when I bought 
this brake controller was that it only comes with up to here. So I bought some kind of a brake adapter for like a Toyota or something. And I'm just going to cut the end off right here. And that way I can uh, remove this from the vehicle if I want to. And uh, the wiring will be kind of tidy in there. So that's uh, the reason I did that. It should reach from uh, where I'm going to install this down to the wiring below the pedals. All right, so it took me most of the day, but I got things wired up here. I got the uh, brake controller here. So it eventually, it'll go to sleep so it's not killing the battery. Right now it's not connected. When I pull the trigger, you may not be able to see it, but the uh, brake lights come on. You should be able to see the edge of that, perhaps. That's when I'm pulling that trigger there. So that's good. You can use that if someone's tailgating you. You don't need to hit the brakes. I used the pedal. It's still working. That's good. So out of the four wires that they gave me, I only used two. I used the uh, little blue one, which was the trigger for the uh, brake light. And I used the little ground, which is black. And then uh, I drilled a half inch hole. It's hard, you might just see a bit of light going through there. I drilled that just to, underneath of the main grommet, I believe. Yeah, I see it. And uh, I ran a loom through with the uh, red and the blue. So the red I poked up there. That's with the fuse, I have power. I never was able to find the uh, blue or the red wire in the van. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I've got this uh, duplex cable ready to install to replace this. I have to put my uh, fuse panel back in. I just wanted to show you what I did. One thing, uh, when I got this vehicle, all the fuses were upside down. So one at a time, I pulled them out and flipped them upright. That way, uh, if I have a fuse that blows and I find it and I don't have a replacement, I just flip it upside down, which is a cigarette lighter down there. Position 30. That one's uh, problematic. I gotta replace that wire if I want to use that thing. So I basically ran this loom, which has the duplex and the blue, along with the brake lines along the vehicle. I put it in the trough on the bottom of the frame, and then, like I said, I clipped it along all the way along. I had to use a green lee tool. I don't know if I have it kicking around here or not. Yeah, these uh, fishing sticks to uh, push it through. If you had a piece of bamboo or something, you could use that just to put it down that little section of frame. That would also work. Use the multimeter a little bit for verifying grounds. The uh, brake controller, because I had the uh, extension cable on it, it had two points for ground. So I connected one to the uh, in the dash, which I tell you not to do because it could uh, get disconnected. So that's something to think about. Looks like I got the parking brake on. Yeah, that's right, because I was testing my backup. So all of the uh, lights work. Everything is tied up. I came up through here. Got the duplex is coiled up here for later. There's like uh, 10 feet of that right there. So I gotta be careful, make sure it doesn't fall into the wheel well. I think I got it zip tied up good enough. It won't do that. This is the uh, blue wire it continues on, it goes through. And this is the big rat's nest of wire you end up with. So I chose to add that isolator. You don't have to do that. You could have went from the, uh, the vehicle wiring direct to the plug if you wanted to. And that would save you uh, a bunch of junk there, including the one power supply from the battery. The second power supply from the back battery, you would still need to run the plug here. Then the backup, again, if you want to do that, you just have to go up there and tie into the backup light. The hardest part is getting that those light bezels out of there. It can be a bit difficult. So you've got uh, 
three fuses, you'll need the J fuse in the front, which is a 30 amp, and a 30 amp in the back, and a 10 amp if you use the isolator. So you need, I just use the minis. The, uh, I think the fuse panel in this van uses uh, regular blade fuses. I'm not exactly sure. But there's always a, a mismatch of fuses in a vehicle of this type. So I'm going to go get gas now because I'm sure, as you all know, these vans can be hard to fill if you've got the back low.